car accident, right? That's right. Across Amelia 17. No known allergies, no pre-existing. Just came on the chopper out of San Pedro. The EMTs wrote down possible head trauma, along with a collapsed lung and arm. Get the scan and x-rays before we start. I'll go with that. I don't like the bruising. Here she comes, still in shock. I also want a talk screen before we push anything else into her system. Alcohol, amphetamines, the usual. Got it. On it. Do you know your name? It's, it's Amelia Cross, right? That's right. Do you know where you are, Amelia? <laughs> nope. You're at the hospital. You were just in a bad car accident. We're gonna have to perform emergency surgery on you. Do you understand? What? Miss Cross, <laughs> we need to know if you've had any drugs or alcohol this evening. You're not in any trouble, but it's very important that you're honest with us. We were at the club. We were dancing and pulse normal. Is she okay? Is Joy okay? Miss Joy. I think it's a driver. Did she make it? Just lie back. Just lie back. You need to relax. We can talk about your friend when you wake up. Go tell me. Tell me. Pulse rising. Prep her for surgery. She also needs to be intubated for that collapsed lung. And are you still having the nightmares? Not like I used to. They gave me pills for a while, antidepressants or something. They didn't work. The only thing that really helps me is running. Keeps me focused. I understand you're doing quite well. Doing pretty well, yeah. Mm -hmm. I read the high school sports page. My son's about your age. Plays football at Westlake High. You're one of the top track and field athletes in the state. Seems like I was just reading where you are closing in on the record for the national 100 meter... 400 meter dash. 400 meter dash. Yeah. Wow, that's quite an achievement. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. And what does your mother think about that? Because the last time you were here, you said the two of you still aren't getting along very well. Yeah, well, you know what they say, right? The more things change, the more they stay the same. You've been coming to this group for two years, Amelia. And, and you've made a lot of progress since the accident, right? But until you resolve things with your mother, I don't think you can really heal. Yeah, well, that might take a while. Hello? No. 
just one more bite. One more bite apiece. And then you get to go back to your room in time for that court show you like to watch. That food tastes terrible. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. This stuff has been put through the blender so many times, I'm not even sure it counts as food. It's not even green anymore. <laughs> That's pretty good. You like that, huh? Still not eating it. <sighs> what happened to your daughter? She doesn't come around to see you anymore. You're such a pretty girl. She's in school right now. And you stop trying to change the subject. Mm. You have a visitor at the front desk. Oh, tall, dark, and handsome? No such luck. <laughs> it's Amelia. Thanks a lot, Gwen. Should have told her I was busy. Hi, Mom. I was just explaining to your mother that I said it was okay for you to come on back. I appreciate that. We don't nearly see enough of you these days. How's track and field? Really, really great, actually. State finals are coming up soon. Maybe I should come check you out next week. That would be wonderful. I could use all the support I can get. I guess I'm taking a little brick. And you're gonna get Mrs. Wheeler to eat some more peas. I'm gonna give you some alone time. Tracy, uh, Tracy, wait. Good luck. So, why aren't you in class? I'm on my lunch break. We're allowed to go off campus to eat, and I really wanted to see you. I thought I left you a note saying I was working a double today. You did. So why are you here? Because that's all you ever do anymore, Mom. Leave me notes. I mean, when's the last time we actually talked? I don't know. I'm busy. You're busy. You're avoiding me. No, I'm not. If I was avoiding you, I wouldn't be standing here talking to you right now, would I? When I come home from school, you're already in bed. When I wake up in the morning, you're already at work. And when we're both off, you find a way to disappear for the day. And the only reason why you came out here to talk to me is because you know they're going to call you back in any minute now. I'm not going to start a fight with you at the place where I work. So unless you have something you really need to talk to me about... Actually, there is. I thought I saw somebody sneaking around in the backyard this morning. Really? Did you call the police? Well, no, but... Why not? I don't know. I was rattled, okay? Besides, I didn't even get a good look. I would have called you, but you don't answer your cell phone when I call. Right. Because it's usually turned off, because I work in a nursing home, in case you forgot. Anyway, I figured you might like to know. No. You're not a child anymore. You keep giving me this big story about how you, how you straightened up your act, but you still want me to clean up your messes? Mom, it's not like that. No? Okay, prove me wrong. Next time you see a stranger in the backyard or wherever, call the police. Handle it like a grown-up. Mom, I need to go back inside. I'm the only one that can get Mrs. Wheeler to eat. And the next time, if it's not a dire emergency, we can talk about it. Yeah, I'll write it down on a note for you. You didn't get a good look at the guy? I don't even know if it was a guy. All I know is I saw somebody or something zipping past my window this morning. Great. I'm already paranoid about my parents being out of town. Hey, looking good, Amelia. Hey, you kicked ass out there. <laughs> oh, look at you, Little Miss First Place. You already have a fan club? One more win like that, and that scholarship is a lock. God, let's hope so. Anyway, about that guy who was peeping on your window. Hey, let's change the subject, huh? What if it was your creepy neighbor? The guy who always mows his lawn at night? He moved. Yeah, but what if he came back? Uh... <laughs> oh, God, I'm kidding. Uh, not funny, Laura. You totally freaked me out. How do you know it wasn't just your imagination? It wasn't my imagination. <laughs> what are you doing? Looking at paranoid schizophrenia. What? No, give me that. <gasps> my phone! <gasps> Sorry. I'll go get it. Looks like you need a leash for your phone. Paranoid schizophrenia. Is this normally the type of thing you search for? Should I be concerned? That wasn't me, it's my friend's phone. I think it was supposed to be a joke. It's fine, I was just using that as an icebreaker, so. Well, that's some icebreaker. Well, at least she wasn't looking up something else. So, is this a thing you do? Stand around and wait for people to drop their phones so you can start a conversation? No, only you. You're new, right? Just started yesterday. I'm Jake. Amelia Cross. You got a last name there, Jake? That one you have to figure out for yourself. Excuse me, but 
That's my phone. <laughs> Sorry, my friend. Right. I'm sure we'll bump into each other again real soon. Let's hope. <sighs> what was that? What was what? You and Mr. Hot New Guy over there? He was just picking the phone up off the ground, that's all. He was just trying to be nice. <laughs> yeah, right. There was a whole thing going on between you and Jake St. Dreamy. Jake? Is that his name? <laughs> I knew it! <laughs> Sassy girl! <laughs> okay, don't go causing trouble now. In case you forgot, I have a boyfriend. <gasps> yes, who? <laughs> Somebody who's about to get an elbow in their stomach if they sneak up on me like that again. Mm, thought you'd be happier to see me. <laughs> Ignore her, Scott. She's in freakout mode right now. She has a stalker. What? I thought I saw somebody in my kitchen window this morning. Well, did you call the police? You sound just like my mom. Okay, yes, fine, I promise. The next time I see a stranger looking in my window, I will call the cops. Well, we could always stay over. <laughs> Somehow, I think my mom would like that even less. <laughs> Let's go to class, okay? <laughs> We meet again. Oh. Shh. What are you doing here? Well, apparently I'm behind in literature, so they uh, sent me here to read a couple books. Oh, that's not so bad. Well, they gave me a list. Ouch. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just comparing ancient Roman government to current U.S. government for social studies. Well, maybe I'm better off with these books. <laughs> wow. Tablet, notebook, reference books. It's impressive. You play for keeps. You have no idea. I'm sorry, am I bothering you? I didn't really come here to read books. I was just going to use the period to meet people. No, you're not bothering me. I like the attention. Unfortunately, I think you are barking up the wrong tree. I am. I'm dating somebody. So you assume I'm hitting on you? You are hitting on me. No, I told you I came here to meet people. We talked earlier, I figured we could do it again, and here we are. So me having a very serious boyfriend doesn't bother you at all? Nope. So how very serious is this relationship? Are you guys engaged to be married? Is there a kid involved? No. Doesn't sound very serious to me. I guess that's one way of looking at it, yeah. I'm a glass half full kind of guy. And then I say, yeah, full of crap. Uh, you won't say that. No? You won't say that because you're too busy trying to figure out what kind of guy I am. You're intrigued. Already comparing me to whoever this very serious boyfriend is. Hmm. You have a very high opinion of yourself. Not as high as yours. Touche. I think you're just looking for somebody with lower standards. Oh, could mm. come back. Mm. But you know I'm right. Anyway, I'll leave you to your report. Have fun. Hey, Tay! Hey, no talking. Sorry.
Hey, coach. How can I help you cross? I think I tripped on that last lap back there. If you did, I didn't notice. Do you know what your time was on the 400? No. 58 seconds. Do you know what the national high school record is? 54.15 seconds. I'm counting on you to win state for us. Don't let me down. Hey, you did great. I didn't beat the national record. You're so hard on yourself. You killed it out there. I can't afford not to beat. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, I tried calling you last night. Where were you? It was a band practice. Turn my phone off. You don't check your messages? I think my girlfriend would hate that. <laughs> no offense, but your girlfriend seems like a real bitch. <laughs> OK, yeah, I'm not walking into that one. Mm, hot and smart. <laughs> Cross, no PDA on my field. Sorry. <laughs> Oops. Hessler, you're not supposed to be here. We were just leaving. So what, you're stalking me now? First you show up at my home, and now this? We've never been to your home. No, I saw you there this morning. We just came here to watch you do all the things that Joy is never going to. Going to school, having a boyfriend, playing sports. It's the life she was supposed to lead. You can't keep blaming me for this, Mrs. Hessler. It's been two years now. You see, this little act of yours won't last. Sooner or later, you'll screw up and they'll revoke your probation. And when they do, I am going to do everything in my power to help make sure that you stay in jail. Just go home, Mrs. Hessler. I don't want you to get arrested. We're leaving. Hey, you told me, you promised me we were going to talk to her. You won't see us again. I know this was wrong. She wanted to come. You probably don't care. But I miss her, too. I think about her all the time. I even have nightmares. Don't you dare cry. It is my job to cry, not yours. You don't get to. I was her mother. You weren't even her friend. You let her kill herself. Come on. Hey, you OK? I'm fine. What was that about? It was just a misunderstanding, that's all. It didn't look like a misunderstanding. It was nothing, okay? we would have been home by now. Oh, yeah, that sounds like a great way of getting pulled over by the cops. <laughs> mm. So you said you had something to show me? Ooh, it's a surprise. Shut up. <laughs> OK. Ever hear of Sawyer Ravine? Mm -mm. Well, it's around here somewhere. Off the road a bit. Mm -hmm. Couple hundred foot drop, straight down. <laughs> and you wanted to show this to me because? <laughs> well, it's actually a game. OK, so you go off the road, okay. drive down this old logging path cool. with the lights off. Oh, <laughs> the record is 15 minutes. 15 minutes for what? <laughs> 15 minutes before you chicken out and turn the headlights back on. <laughs> or you go over into the ravine. <laughs> okay. Whichever comes first. That doesn't sound like a really nice game to me. Oh, nobody's <laughs> ever gone into the ravine. Well, yeah, but there's a first time for everything. Mm hmm Yeah, I figured you'd be scared. Oh, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you can go home and wet the bed or something. <laughs> okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. I never said that I wasn't going to do it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, come on. Pull over. I will drive. No way. This is my mom's car. 
if anybody's gonna wreck it, it's gonna be me. So, we're doing this? Yeah, we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Did you like the movie? Yeah, it was pretty good. And the pizza was okay? Pretty good. How do you think I'd look with a purple mohawk? I think it's time for a change. Sounds good. You okay? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just um, thinking about this essay I have for my advanced writing class, that's all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Something's wrong. Why would you say that? Because every time you get stressed out about a meet or you have a fight with your mom, you make me drive you right here to the spot. Nothing's wrong. I already told you. I'm just worried about my schoolwork. That was that couple, right? The one you got in an argument with? They're, um, they're my mom's friends. She's really mad at them, so they yell at me, I yell at them. It's this vicious cycle. Yeah, you're a terrible liar. <laughs> what do you think I'm lying about? You never tell me anything about your past. Look, I moved here a year ago, and I heard some stories. And then that couple shows up randomly. I told you, Look, if I... you. If you don't want to tell me, it's fine. I just, I don't want you to lie to me. Maybe I'm afraid you won't feel the same about me if I tell you. No way. <laughs> about two years ago, I had a really bad drinking problem. I went out all the time, I partied all the time, I drank a lot. I've never seen you drink. I don't. Not anymore. I was a different person back then. You probably wouldn't even have liked me very much. So what's changed? One night, my friend Joy and I were really messed up and wanted to take her mom's car out for a drive. We stuck to the back roads so we wouldn't get pulled over. We had this crazy bet that neither one of us could drive for 15 minutes with the headlights shut off. And you did it? Joy did. She wanted to go first. I was in the passenger seat and my window was rolled down, so I got flung out about halfway down. But Joy didn't make it. She went into the ravine. I didn't go to her funeral. But sometimes I like to come out here to this very spot. This is where we went over. Oh, God. I was 16 back then. Still a minor, so they put me on probation. No drinking, no partying, no failing grades, and I have to go to this support group. Mom still can't forgive me. She had to take care of me all the time when I was drunk. I made her life a living hell. And you thought I'd walk away from you over something like that? I mean, you even said it yourself. You're not that person anymore. I try really hard to run away from it, but it always ends up chasing me. So those people you were talking to? Joy's parents. Mom filed a restraining order against them, not that it does any good. Well, what if she called the police? I couldn't do that to them. Plus, the restraining order wasn't even my idea, so. Yeah, but if they're threatened. They're to... still in mourning, Scott. I understand that, believe me. Oh, well, I'm sorry that happened to you. But doesn't change the fact that you lied to me and I trusted you. That's all you got out of this conversation? You're the only one that I told about this and I only told you because we're dating. Are we? And sometimes it's kind of hard to tell. You get distant. And I knew you were keeping something from me, but I just thought you were cheating on me or something. Well, now you know the truth.
Scott. It's getting late. We better drive back. I got home a little early, and I couldn't find you, so I came up here. I was out with Scott. Scott, huh? Is that the guitar player? Yeah. We've been dating for about a month now. He's a really, really nice guy, Mom. I'm sure he is. Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. I just a really long day. It, that double really wiped me out. Hey, when I came up here, I saw this on your dresser. I dug it out earlier. It's really not that big of a deal. I'm just not sure you should have pictures like this around. It's the only picture of me and Joy I have left. You can't move forward if you're stuck in the past, right? I can't move forward? We. I meant we. Mom, why did you really come up here? Um, like I said, I, I didn't know where you were. Well, I'd be happy to tell you where I'm gonna be, except you're not exactly the easiest person to talk to anymore. You're fine. I think I'm gonna go to bed. I love you too, Mom. How things go with your daughter yesterday? It went okay, I think. The reason I ask is, uh, my daughter wouldn't check on me if the house was on fire and my phone was broken. <laughs> <laughs> I figure Amelia must have needed something. Oh, yeah, she did. My attention. What? Yeah, for some reason, she thinks that I've been ignoring her lately. Are you? She's 18. She doesn't need me anymore. What the hell kind of answer is that? She's your daughter, of course she needs you. No, there is more to the story than that. Besides, it's not like I don't keep tabs on her, I do. I have an app on my phone that tracks an app on her phone, so I know where she is. That's not actually talking to her. All right, you know what? Forget I said anything, okay? Oh, obviously, that is not gonna happen. What's the rest of the story? I am just really angry at her. You're allowed to be angry with her, but what you're not allowed to do is give up on her. It is not that simple. Sure it is. Tracy, she's your daughter. You give her your attention. Besides, <laughs> it is better than coming around here all the damn time. Let me ask you something. Has your daughter ever done anything that you felt was unforgivable? What, like murder somebody? No, not that bad. <laughs> well, close, actually. No. But even if she did, I'd probably still forgive her. Why? I'm her mother. I'm the only person who would. Damn it. What's wrong? Nothing. I just thought I saw somebody I knew, that's all. Hey, thank you. You're welcome. 
I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. It's good to see you all again. I'm Dr. Griffin. I'm a licensed psychologist, and I facilitate the Survivor Support Group. I'd like to introduce our newest member, Jake Jericho. Jake, come on down. Have a seat. You two know each other? We go to school together. Oh, excellent. Having a friend in the group will probably help Jake open up a little bit more. Well, as a new guy, why don't you introduce yourself and maybe explain a little bit about why you're here? Okay, um... Well, as, uh... Dr. Griffin said, uh, my name's Jake Jericho. I moved into town about a week ago. Uh, both my parents are in the Air Force, so I move around a lot. Uh, anyway, um... Jake, go ahead. So, uh, four years ago, my twin brother Jordan was driving around with some friends and died in a car accident. It was tough. You know, everyone tells you that you'll get over it eventually, but you don't. I wasn't there when he died, but I have nightmares about it all the time. And some of them he's still alive, like it never happened. I used to get in fights a lot. I would steal booze from my dad's liquor cabinet. And I was on all kinds of drugs. None of them worked. I got kicked out of military school. The only thing that seemed to help was talking about it. So wherever my parents end up being stationed, I try to find a support group. We're glad to have you here. Mm -hmm. Glad to be here. You all seem really nice. Glad to have you. Four years is a long time to grieve, though. Is there, like, a, a limit? I'm not saying that you shouldn't honor your brother's memory, but at some point, you have to allow yourself to focus on other things. Would Jordan have wanted you to spend the rest of your life letting his death haunt you? With all due respect, I don't think that's something you have control over. Yeah. I mean, I don't spend all day thinking about Joy's death. Sometimes it just hits you. Mm. You could be having the best day of your life and all of a sudden, boom, mm -hmm. you start crying over an old joke or an old memory that only the two of you shared. You can't put that kind of pain away. I, I mean, you can live with it, but you can't just say time's up and move on. It, it doesn't work like that. Exactly. Hey, uh, sorry if that was weird back there. I had no idea that you came to these sport group meetings. That's because I don't tell anybody. I really like what you said back there. Thanks. I'm sorry about your brother. I'm sorry about your friend. One day at a time, right? Hey. Don't listen to Dr. Griffin. You can grieve as long as you need to. You don't think it's weird? I think it'd be weirder if you didn't. You ever try explaining how you feel to a bunch of people who've never lost anyone? All of the time. I usually get some fake sympathy if I'm lucky. Fortunately, it happened a couple of years ago, so everybody just sort of forgot about it. You can get pretty crazy in the privacy of my own little bubble, though. I don't think you're crazy. Oh, I talk to Jordan all the time like he's sitting right next to me. Okay, now that's kind of crazy. <laughs> you ever write him an email? An email? Oh, yeah. I have a folder filled with them, emails to Joy. Of course, they have nowhere to go, but it feels nice saying something to her, you know? Yeah. Look, I have a ton of schoolwork I need to get done, so I should probably get going. We should talk again sometime. We should. 
Take care, Jake. Trouble? We'll discuss it in my office. What's wrong? I don't know. Scott! Scott! Miss Cross, I advise you to get back to the field. What's going on? Is Scott in trouble or something? Get back to the field. I don't know why I'm here. We got an anonymous tip that you were selling steroids to some of the members of the football team. So we checked. Miss Lewis, those aren't mine. Whose are they? I don't know. I've never seen those before in my life. I don't even know what they are. They're steroids, son. Don't play stupid. Now, it's possible you were just dealing to some of your buddies on the football team, and it's also possible you were slipping them to your girlfriend. And if that's the case, you might both be facing some serious jail time. I'm not a drug dealer. We're going to do a full investigation with the police. In the meantime, you're temporarily suspended. And unfortunately, the police are on their way to take you into custody. I'm being arrested? Zero tolerance. This is just starting to get weird. What are you doing here? Yeah, you're talking about social studies so much, I thought I'd switch out of my intro to jazz literature class and into this one. I didn't think it'd be yours, but... Yeah, but I didn't talk anything up. Okay, well, I read between the lines. Seemed like a great class, like piece of credit. But if it's just gonna make you upset, I guess I can... Get them to change the schedule back to the way it was. No. I'm sorry, you can stay. I'm just a little touchy right now, that's all. I had another fight with my mom this morning. Well, I might make this class more fun for you. <laughs> it might. Might even break down that big wall you keep putting up, too. Mm. I'm not one to break a man's dream, so I won't remind you of the fact that I have a boyfriend. I was trying really hard to forget that. And I'm trying really hard not to use the term just friends. Ouch. Mm. Although, if it helps, you might eventually become a really great one. Oh. Like the kind um, with or without benefits? Definitely without. Uh, and yeah, no, that doesn't help me at all. Congratulations. I think you picked the worst part of town to meet in. Yeah, it's the only place I could find where no one would see us together. What am I looking at? 
It's what you asked for. It was every detail of her daily life. No. No, that's not what I asked for. I wanted evidence of her drinking again, doing drugs, anything. I'd settle for pictures of her stealing a pack of gum from a convenience store. She's not doing drugs. Maybe she's clean after all. I wanted her probation revoked. You failed. I heard about the boyfriend, Scott Bradley. They found drugs in his locker. So? Oh, don't play cute with me, kid. I know about your background, remember? I know why you were bounced out of military school. Hell, that's why I hired you. That had your handiwork written all over it. Don't question what I'm doing. You're not doing anything. I needed proof. I'm not paying you anymore. You're firing me? Yes, you're fired. My wife talked me out of this little arrangement of ours. I won't stop watching her. I'm not leaving town. You damn well better consider it. You're 20 years old. Those fake transcripts of yours won't keep you enrolled in this high school for very much longer. They're gonna find out who you really are. Especially if they get an anonymous phone call from a concerned parent. You can't start something like this and expect me to just walk away. She understands me like no one else does. She... <laughs> You're obsessed with this girl. We're both obsessed with this girl. The only difference is one of us is willing to kill for her. I've been trying to call you all night. What happened? Where are you? I, I just got home. My parents just bailed me out of jail. Jail? Yeah. Look, they, they found steroids in my locker. They think I'm dealing. What? They drug tested me. They, they seized my college bank account, and now I'm... I'm suspended until after the trial. I don't know what to do. You think somebody set you up? Yeah, of course somebody set me up. But you know I have nothing at all to do with drugs, right? Amelia? Sure. Yeah, of course. Look. I really need you in my life right now. I'm here. Good. Good, good. Um, Listen, the police, they asked me a couple questions about you. What kind of questions? They think that I might have given you some steroids because of your track score and you're an all-star athlete and all that. And what did you tell them? Well, the truth. Look, the, they're probably just going to ask you a few questions. This is a nightmare. I'm going to lose my scholarship before I even get it. <sighs> well, I'm sorry I didn't consider that when somebody was planning drugs on me. Scott, you know I didn't mean it like that. Look, I didn't tell them anything, so you should be fine. Who could have done this? I don't know. I'm pretty much cool with everybody. They talked to the students and the teachers to see if anyone was hanging around my locker and nobody saw a thing. Hey, just calm down, okay? You didn't do anything wrong. They'll figure that out. Well, I hope so. They will. Look, you should get some rest, okay? Yeah, you too. Sorry that I'm not going to be at any of the practices for a while. Yeah, me too. Talk soon. Talk soon.
doing here I know how this looks but I had to talk to you I spent the last two years feeling sorry for you but this is it we're done uh, Amelia please this is important I didn't call the cops a few days ago when you were looking through my window or when you showed up here but if I see you or your husband here again my husband's dead I'm not gonna go into detail but it has something to do with you <laughs> you are some sick sick lady you know Amelia please. I see you here again I'm calling the cops I mean it. Leave me and my mother alone. Good morning, sunshine. How are things? And by things, I mean you and Scott. Boy, you just cut right to the chase, huh? It's all over school. I just wanted to make sure you're OK. I'm definitely OK. I am worried about Scott, though. Did the police talk to you yet? No. I think I'm just going to go to Mr. Lewis tomorrow and tell him everything that I know. They can give me a blood test, do whatever they want, but they're going to figure out who planted those drugs on him. You really think that's a good idea? You have a, um, history. Why? Because I'm on probation? Because of what happened to Joy? Well, yeah. I know you've been working hard on changing your life, but that stuff doesn't just go away, right? Do you really think I'm still like that? Do you think Scott's like that? He seems like a nice guy. But don't you think he could have been lying to you all this time? He's in a band. He's around a lot of users. Maybe he really is dealing drugs. How could you even say that? I'm just... Scott's your friend, too. You know him. You know him. Okay, was... Amelia, chill out. I'm sorry. I've just really been on edge lately. I know. I shouldn't have said anything. No, no, no. You were looking out for me, and I appreciate that. Scott. I figured you could use the moral support. How nice of you. Seriously, I'm just here as a friend. <sighs> what, uh, what was that all about with your coach, if you don't mind me asking? The police talked to him today. They wanted to know if I had anything to do with Scott's arrest. What, did they think you're doing drugs? I don't know. I guess they figured Scott was giving them to me or something. Was he? Of course not. Sorry, it's not my business. No, it's not. But I do appreciate you coming out here to watch me today. Uh, I can use all the support I can get. It's the least I could do. You're fast out there. Thanks. Seriously, you put me out there and I'd be in a stretcher after the first 20 meter freestyle jumping. You don't know a whole lot about track and field, do you? Not even enough to fake it. <laughs> well, at least you're honest. I try. And persistent. You know, I think you just summed me up in two sentences. Maybe we should go running sometime. You mean like jogging, right? Not any crazy hurdles or anything like that? <laughs> People don't typically go jumping hurdles together. Okay, well then, yeah, I, I can jog. Name and time and place. Okay. Tomorrow, 5 o'clock, 9 Mile Road. We can meet at the bridge. Okay, I'm gonna have to look up where that is. I'm still trying to find my way around here. <laughs> You don't think Scott will mind? Should he? Well, no, I'm harmless. Why does everything you say sound like you're flirting? No, I think it's just the way you hear it. And on that note, I'm gonna go hit the showers. Tomorrow, Great. nine mile. If you're late, I start running without you. Ah. <sighs> 
You scared me. Want to take a wild guess why I'm home early? No? Okay, I'll tell you. I got a call from the police. Mom, I can explain. Don't bother. You know what, Amelia? This is exactly what I was worried about, getting calls from the police about you. The cops haven't even talked to me oh, yet. Apparently they're going to. Meanwhile, you just told me about this new boyfriend. Turns out he's a drug dealer. No, Mom, someone is setting him up. Would you listen to yourself? I know how this looks, but you have to trust me. Trust you? Really? You don't remember all the lies you told me about how you weren't drunk or messed up all the time? No, you used to cry even. Oh, I'm gonna change this time. Don't send me to jail. I've been clean for a while now. Oh, yeah, yeah. You used to tell me that a lot, too. Over two years, Mom. It doesn't mean anything to me. And you know what? I'm pretty sure it doesn't mean anything to you, either. No, I think you'll do whatever you think you have to do and say to keep this little gravy train of yours going for another month or two. And then you'll have another episode and we'll end up right back here. I've worked awfully hard at this. Getting good grades. Winning track meets, trying to get a scholarship. I mean, doesn't that mean anything to you? Do you remember the night that I had to get stitches? I do. You hit me with a bottle. And then I looked into your eyes and... At that point, my daughter wasn't there anymore. I kept telling myself that it wasn't you, that it was the drugs and the alcohol, even after the accident. Now you're going to blame that on me, too. I'm going to blame you for getting into that car. I blame you for taking that first drink. I raised you better than that. But you know what? You're grown. You're a grown woman now. And I'll be damned if I'm going to spend the rest of my life scraping you off the kitchen floor every time you decide to go get drunk with that drug-dealing boyfriend of yours. But I told you I don't do that stuff anymore. Why can't you believe me? Because I can't. I can't give you any more second chances. If you messed up this time, it's on you. I can't help you this time. I wouldn't dream of asking you. But if, if you really are clean and sober, like you keep telling me, maybe we can work this out someday. I don't think so. No, I think you gave up on me after the accident. I would hope that maybe someday you would see how serious I was about getting better, but you haven't. But I don't blame you for that. You were right. You were right about everything. Amelia, except Scott. He's a good guy, Mom. And I am clean. Do you think that I would be up for an athletic scholarship if I was out getting wasted all the time? Do you know how hard I have had to work just to be normal? I love you, Mom. I love you too, Amelia. I just can't, I can't help you this time. How are you holding up? Not so good. The police are pretty convinced that I did it. And our lawyer is trying to find some kind of loophole or something. I don't know. It'll work itself out somehow. You sure about that? Because a lot of innocent people get locked up. You're not going to be one of those people. How you doing? Pretty good. I made great time on the 400. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, the police asked my mom a bunch of questions about me and you today. She thinks that I'm relapsing. Well, she knows better. Mm -hmm. Would it help if I called her? I think that would make it worse. <sighs> Damn. I mean, it's okay. She's just harboring a lot of resentment right now, you know? Well, I'd let you stay with me if I could. Um, 
I also wanted to let you know that I am going on a jog with Jake Jericho tomorrow. The new guy at school? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's no big deal. He just doesn't have any friends right now, and I figured I would bring him along. Well, I, uh, you never asked me to come jogging with you. Fine, you can come if you want. Uh, nah, I don't want to cramp your style. What is that supposed to mean? Why even tell me this? Oh, so I know who to be pissed off at when you dump me for him, or...? <laughs> no, I told you because you're my boyfriend, and I thought we didn't keep secrets from each other. I mean, are you seriously jealous of that guy? I don't trust him. Well, I'm not asking you to trust him. I'm asking you to trust me. Well, look, I've put you through a lot, so I guess I can't be mad that you're looking at other guys. Oh my God, you're reading way too into this, Scott. It's just jogging. You know what? Um, maybe you should get going. I don't want my mom and dad to think I'm not talking to myself in here. Are we okay? Yeah. We're okay. <laughs> Thanks for checking in on me. <laughs> I'll be sure to smuggle out a frappuccino next time. Make sure there is two espresso shots. You got it, dude. Am I going any faster? One of my legs is gonna fall out. <laughs> Seriously, can we take five? I need to sit down for a second. No, this is when you keep going. This is the part where your body actually gets the workout. It's called the runner's high. Yeah, I think I'm experienced in runner's OD. <laughs> I'll run backwards. Maybe you'll be able to catch up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Whoa, are you okay? Oh. Karma's a real bitch, you know? Yeah, seriously, come on. Ah, uh, uh, my ankle. Okay, let's get you up on you. Oh. Does that hurt? A little. Okay, I don't think you broke it. I don't think you even sprained it. You probably just twisted it. Oh, good. I don't think they'd let me compete in state finals with crutches. Yeah, probably not. Here, just relax. I'll work on it. Oh, okay. Let me know if it starts to hurt. Actually, that feels really nice. Mm. Yeah? Not that nice. I'll try to keep it below the knee. Smart move. So you seemed a little distant today. I had a falling out with my mother. How bad of a falling out? I don't know. I can stay with a friend until the end of the school year if things get really bad. College is coming soon anyways, so... Well, you could always stay with me. <laughs> no. <sighs> Worth a shot. <laughs> Sorry about your mom. Ah, oh, it's okay. It's been coming now for a while anyways. What about you? You get along with your parents? My parents are in Fort Meade. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. They still have a house out here, so... After I was kicked out of military school, they gave me the option of going to private school out there or public school here. Mm. I decided to stay. So I'm assuming the answer is no, you don't get along with your parents. You assume correctly. <laughs> what was military school like? Like a really bad memory I don't like to think about. Sorry. It's okay. It wasn't all bad. I learned a lot of cool stuff in there. And about your brother? Caused a rift in my family, that's for sure. I think I remind them a little too much, Jordan. When I look in the mirror, I remind myself a little too much of Jordan. Do you ever think it should have been me instead? Yeah, all the time. Yeah, same here. I think Dr. Griffin would call that survivor's remorse. <laughs> well, I, for one, am glad that it wasn't you. You know, you're the first person that's ever said that to me. You should probably change the subject, huh? Amen. Oh, yeah, that feels really nice. <laughs> See, I'm not such a bad guy. Mm. You're a great guy. I mean, maybe in a different world, we could... Uh, consider the line crossed. Okay, come on, Amelia. I thought you liked me. I, I understand you. You understand me. I, I did, I do. But Jake, come on, we barely even know each other. 
And I have a boyfriend, remember? Yeah, some boyfriend drug dealer. He is not a drug dealer. You know what? This little get-together of ours is over. Go home, Jake. This is not how this is supposed to go. I'm sorry if I gave you the wrong impression or something, but I genuinely thought you came out here to be a friend. I am. You're not acting like a friend right now, Jake. Okay, listen to me. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, I, I didn't mean any of it. We can go slow if you want to. Run, just don't walk away from me. Not now. Not after everything I've done. Okay, you, please. you're really starting to sound crazy now, Jake. Go home. I'll see you in school tomorrow, okay? Come back here now or you'll regret it! I am not making this up. He went totally psycho. Oh, what a freak. I honestly don't know if I'm embarrassed for you or scared for you. <laughs> How about both? Did you tell Scott yet? I think I'm gonna wait till Scott gets cleared before I give him anything else to worry about. Hey, what if Jake is your crazy stalker guy? The one who's been looking in your windows? Don't even joke about that. I wasn't joking. I don't think he'd go that far. I think he's just got some weird crush on me or... Isn't used to girls saying no to him. Well, crazy or not, I still think he's a total fox. <laughs> Send some of those stalker vibes my way. <laughs> you can have him. <sighs> Listen, about that other thing... Lauren. Hear me out. I've already cleared it with mom and dad. You can stay in Ella's room until graduation. She's not going to be home from college until summer. I really appreciate that. But I think I'd rather stay here and try to work things out with my mom. If things get too rough... I have imposed on enough people for a lifetime. It's not imposing. You're my sister from another mister. <laughs> oh, God, that's terrible. <laughs> Listen, I should get to bed. I have a trick test first thing tomorrow morning. Yikes. Watch yourself with this Jake guy, okay? He's really starting to sound like a psycho. Yeah, I think I might mention something to Mr. Lewis tomorrow when I go talk to him about Scott. <laughs> it's always some kind of drama with you. But I know, I know. Talk to you tomorrow? Get some sleep. You need it. Mm -hmm. You're not going to give me any trouble at bath time, right, Mrs. Wheeler? I'm not making any promises. <laughs> Tracy, there's someone out there waiting for you. Terrific. You can get Mrs. Wheeler into the tub for me. I'll owe you one. Mm -hmm. You owe me two or three. <laughs> All right, Miss Wheeler. Bath time. I'm not making you any promises either. How about I let you watch Vivica's Black Magic? Ooh, uh-huh. I know what you want to talk about, and it can wait until I get home from work. I think it's time we had a talk, Tracy. I see your parents left for work already. What are you doing here? Well, I figured since we had so much in common, I... Better come introduce myself. What the hell are you talking about? Good morning, sweetheart. Good morning to you too, honey pie. Jake? What are you doing with Scott's phone? I have a lot more than his phone. I don't understand. Well, a little while ago, I, um, I zapped him with a stun gun and hogtied him, and now we're just joyriding through the countryside in his car. You're crazy. This is some kind of a sick joke, right? Well, I may or may not be crazy, but this is definitely no joke. Let me talk to him. Yeah, sure. Scott, say hello to your girlfriend. Amelia! Scott, what is he doing to you? <sighs> okay, that's enough of that. Listen, I just wanted to let you know that he is alive. He's fine. And he will remain alive as long as you do exactly what I tell you to. What do you want? After I end this call, you'll have a minute to get down to your car where I have taken the liberty of installing a camera in your dash and a small tracking device in your rear bumper. So not only will I know when you get in your car, but I'll also know where you're going. Now, once you do that for me, I'm going to need you to drive to your old stomping grounds. You remember Sawyer Ravine, right? I thought you might. Now, if you try to call someone or talk to someone or 
make crazy gestures at the window while you're driving. I'll have no choice but to, uh... What was that? Uh, <laughs> that was your boyfriend uh. in extreme pain. I just want to make sure you're paying attention. I am. I'm paying attention. Just please stop hurting him. I know how fast you are, Amelia. Start running. I didn't have your new address, so I took a chance and I came here. Haven't you harassed me and my daughter enough? We have a restraining order on you. I'm not here to harass you. I came here to warn you. What, that you're going to file another court case? Well, good luck. I'm broke. My husband just died a couple of days ago. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. He was a good man, but he did something very, very foolish. He hired someone to investigate your daughter. What? We thought he could find evidence that Amelia had relapsed, that she was drinking and doing drugs again. We thought if we had concrete proof that she had violated the terms of her probation that we could get her thrown in jail. Maybe it's time I take you to court. He never should have done it. I put a stop to it. Unfortunately, the, the man that he hired is a very, very unstable young man. Jake Jericho, he was thrown out of military school for putting a couple of his classmates in the hospital permanently. Well, you paid a guy like that to follow my daughter? My husband was meeting with him to, to tell him that we had changed our mind, and they found him. He was found in his car dead. And you think this Jake Jericho person did it? The police think it was a robbery. There was no reason that he should have been in that area. Why didn't you tell the police everything you knew? I couldn't. I'm afraid this Jake is going to come after me next. I, I think that your daughter is in grave danger. Follow me. Flat tire. No moves. Hey, you break down or something? Uh, no, nothing serious. Just blew out a tire. Oh, yikes, out here in the middle of nowhere. Well, at least I have a spare, right? Still, that's a big old pain in the rear. Is there uh, someone I could call for you or help you change that tire out or something? It, it's totally fine. I got this. Well, at least let me pull this tire out for you. Seriously, I'd really just rather do this myself. I feel bad just, you know, leaving you out here. Well, Honey, thank you for waiting for me. I really appreciate it. Any way for you? You're usually miles ahead of me. I was tying my shoe. What's wrong? Oh, this uh, gentleman's car's broken down. I was just stopping to help. It, it's just a flat tire. It's really nothing serious. Are you sure? Leave the nice man alone, honey. He'll have to excuse my husband. He likes to jump at any opportunity to be able to fix it. <laughs> it's totally fine. I, I appreciate it, really. Good luck. Thanks. Take care. Maybe she's at school. I called on the way over here, and she wasn't in any of her morning classes. Isn't there anyone else you can call? No, I tried her friend Lauren. She said she wasn't in school today at all. Same with her teachers. Nobody knows where she is. Right, there has to be a way to find her. Hold on. There's an app for that? Yeah, I've had it for about a year. It's the only thing that lets me sleep at night. OK, wait, there she is. She's only 15 minutes out, and I think I know where she's going. So you're reading. That's where Joy died. Why on earth would she go there? I don't know. 
But if you want to make this right, go to the police. Tell them everything you know and tell them to get to Sawyer Ravine. I'm pretty sure that lunatic you hired has my daughter. Wait, where are you going? Wait, I'm coming with you. I owe it to Joy. No, you need to go in the... All right, fine, I'm not going to argue with you, but get in the car. We'll call the police. Okay, thank you. We'll be there. Come on. The sheriff said to meet him right where the path to the old logging road starts. I've never been there before. Where? What are you talking Sawyer about? Sawyer Ravine. I never had the nerve. So why now? I told you because I owe it to my daughter. She would want me to make up for my mistakes. Okay, I, yes, I have watched Amelia for the last couple of years. I am not proud of that. I was jealous. I couldn't bring myself to admit that she did exactly what she was supposed to do with her second chance. She turned her life around. You don't know my daughter. I do know her. Who she was before the accident, she was exactly like Joy. She took advantage of you. She lied. She cheated. She snuck out, partied all night. Maybe she even hit you a couple of times. But I'll tell you something. I would give anything to have her back, even if she stayed exactly the way she was. Do you really think that we're going to have some kind of bonding moment? Forget it. I'm not. Okay, what Amelia did was wrong. I know that. But what I did was even more wrong. I think your daughter's more than paid for her mistakes. So let's just find her. for the cops. Wait! You can't just go charging in there! Oh, really? That psycho you hired has my daughter! Just please, just let the sheriff handle the... Amelia, I've been watching you the whole time. I did what you wanted me to do. Now let Scott go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No one ever said anything about letting anyone go. I said I wouldn't kill him if you did exactly what I said. Put your arms behind your back. No. Amelia, come on. I love you, okay? Plus, I just finished sharpening my knife before I came, and it's been a while since I've had a chance to use it. Huh? 
Don't make me cut up that pretty little face, huh? Do you really think people aren't going to come out here looking for us? What, way out here? Hell, <laughs> oh. I'm surprised they ever found you and your dead drinking, buddy. No, no, by the time they stumble upon this place, I'll be half a world away. Sorry, we'll be half a world away. We? Yeah, me and you. I'm not going anywhere with you. I'm not going to be your girlfriend or whatever it is that you want me to be. Not now, not ever. Is that a challenge? <laughs> Just remember, we're jogging. We're not competing, okay? So pace yourself. No running, just a jog. I got this. Let's do this. Mom, have you ever run before? Well, yeah, I ran once when I was in college. Of course, it was mostly my mouth, but <laughs> I think this will be good for you. You know, it'll improve your cardiovascular, your lung capacity. Exactly how old do you think I am anyway? Okay, I'll, uh, I'll still go slow, though. Give you some time to warm up. Oh, let's just do this. Yep. A Charlie horse. Are are you okay? Yes, I can. Mom, <laughs> you said this wasn't a competition. <sighs> Someone's taking the day off. I'm going to watch Amelia in the state finals. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Glad to see you two working things out. Oh, me too. And I have to say it. I appreciate your advice. From one mother to another. Take care of what you got. That daughter of yours is the most precious thing you will ever have. I'll keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Wish me luck. Wait, you or her? Both. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not gonna be too happy for you. I still gotta feed Miss Wheeler. Yeah, damn right you do. to get asked a lot of questions about that day. Did it change my life? Do I have nightmares about it? Do I spend every day mourning what I lost? And the truth is, I don't know. I honor the dead by living the best life I can. By never looking back. You're a light that's deep inside me. Always here to guide me. Still I miss you. Every day it keeps me warm. Getting braver, getting stronger. I used to run away from the darkness. Now I know you can't always run. Sometimes you have to turn around and face it. 